Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Luke chapter 1 verse 68, the amplified version of that. It says, Blessed, praised and ex exalted and thanked be the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and brought deliverance and redemption to his people. Somebody shout hallelujah for that. He has raised up a horn of salvation, a mighty and valiant helper, the author of salvation, for us is the house of David his servant. This is as he promised by the mouth of his holy prophets from the most ancient times in the memory of man, that we should have deliverance and be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who detest and pursue us with hatred. To make true and show the mercy and compassion and kindness promised to our forefathers and remember and carry out his holy covenant to bless which is all the most sacred because it is made by God himself that covenant he sealed by an oath to our forefather Abraham to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our foes might serve him fearlessly praise God tell somebody I serve God fearlessly and in the 75th verse he says in holiness divine consecration and righteousness in accordance with the everlasting principles of right within his presence all the days of our lives somebody shout hallelujah god has ordained you and i to do and live in his presence all the days of our lives every day of your life you ought to be in the presence of god every day of your life you ought to function in the highest dimension of his presence somebody shout hallelujah the presence of God is what gives us life. It's what gives us identity. It's what defines what we and I, you and I call life. Without that presence, we are nothing. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I know that many people, many a time, some take it lightly. Some because they are not fully aware of the purpose and intent of why God gives you his presence. But some also because they've become so accustomed and familiar uh, to certain presence some even in the time when they ought to be going deeper in God some become callous because of the indifference of their souls the darkness that is in their hearts that blindness of their of their souls they don't see certain things and because they don't see certain things they are dispensed in the lusts of this world every time the presence comes every time the presence is confirmed or affirmed in their souls it always drives them to their need and not the purpose of God have you understood what I just said but good news as we continue to know God many of us are understanding and getting clearly to appreciate and I think the things that I'm going to share tonight are going to help you understand uh, why it's important for you to have a full understanding of the presence of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. The presence of God has degrees. Right? It has degrees. It's not one constant idea. Presence. It has degrees. And those degrees vary. Somebody shout hallelujah. But before we go into the degrees of the presence of God, there are three types of his presence. There is the glory, a Hebrew kabod, the word Hebrew kabod, which means uh, the things that are created and manifestedly seen in existence. When you look at trees, you see the glory of God. When you look at, at animals, you see the glory of God. When you look at the earth and how it's arrayed in the art and design of the flowers and the fields, everything you see there spells the glory of God. It's enough for you to know that everything you see could not have simply happened out of some bank. The big bank could not have been that artistic. Are you following what I'm saying? It 
took something deeper than that. I mean, look at how trees are arrayed. Look at the colors. How can the Big Bang, how can the, that theory have that much wisdom? In fact, the guy who invented it, Darwin, on his deathbed, he repented. And, and that's the same thing some people teach up to today. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not, it cannot be, it cannot happen. But when you look at the earth, you could say, uh, I think somewhere, Mother Earth, who is the father? Do you understand what I'm saying? Of course I know where they get it from, but some do not complete that. Again, we know the Bible says the earth brings forth ear for ear and corn for corn. It brings forth, right? It, the earth has an ability of producing. So that's the mindset of why they call it Mother Earth. But it's not just Mother Earth in the sense of some have actually centered earth as a god. You understand? As a mind of its own, as a spirit of its own, as a kind of infinite power of its own. And that's not possible. Us cannot have that much intelligence. Somebody said hallelujah. There must be an infinite being who is responsible for everything we see as we see it. It's too wise for it to just appear. I mean, look at the human brain. We could not have just appeared. Because we only created spaces that exist beyond the normal paradigm of living soul. We think. We have faculties that function, we have choice, we have will, we have intellect. You understand? We are different. So anyway, I was talking about Kabod, the, the presence, the things you see present, right? The trees and everything. Then there is the Shekinah. Shekinah is the manifest presence of God without a man, but in doing so, he, he puts an extraordinary experience, right? Like Moses in the burning bush. That was Shekinah. Like the cloud that went them by day and the fire that flew by night. That's the that's Shekinah. It's the manifest presence without a man. Are you hearing me? And then there is glory, doxa, which is the present truth New Testament dispensation that all that God is and has is in you. The Bible says, for of his fullness we have received. Do you know what that means? Of his fullness we have received. Of his fullness. You know, the Bible tells us, for it pleased the Father that in who? Jesus. Should dwell all the fullness of God bodily. Do you believe that? That it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness of God bodily would dwell. Now, if in him dwelleth all fullness of God bodily in Christ. Right? And the Bible is very clear that of his fullness have we received. What does that mean to you? Come on, what does that mean to you? It means that all that God is and has is here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, let's define the degrees of God's presence. It's important for you to understand that the presence of God has degrees. Okay? I'm not mentioning them in their quantity of measure in the beginning but i will progressively give you the idea as you continue to listen okay now number one there is a presence that goes with the word sent to a man or a people right to a man okay when god gives you a word there's a presence it comes with it when he sends it to you are you following me there is a presence of God that moves with the word that is sent to a man or a people. Sent to a man or a people. Okay? Now, in the book of Jonah, chapter 1, and let's begin from verse 1. The Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, This is the word. It came. Listen. The word came. To who? The word did what? The word did what? Came. To Jonah the son of Amittai saying arise go to Nineveh that great city and cry against it for their wickedness is come before me but the Bible says but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of God did you hear that? he flees unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to, to Tarshish so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord God was not present in Nineveh God was not present where Jonah was. God was present where the word was sent to. That very word, he fleed from the instruction of God toward him. When he flees from the word of God from him, the Bible says he fled from the presence. There's a presence of God that comes with the word God sends to you. Do you understand that? There's a presence that comes to you when God sends the word to you. Sometimes some people don't physically flee. 
Sometimes certain people become indifferent. And in the presence of indifference, they flee from the word God has sent them. God can tell you you are blessed. It comes with the presence. Are you hearing me? But you see, some of you don't just flee from the word. Some of you don't know how to receive a certain degree of presence in your life. God is present in the word he sends. When you flee from that word, you have fled from the, the word and the presence thereof. Are you following what I'm saying? So that the presence of God comes through the word he sends. Some people, they flee from the word. Some people flee from the word sent them. Some people, without even knowing, I think some of you have listened to the sermon, the four facets of hearing. When the farmer is sowing seed, he starts to explain how everybody responds to seed. Right? The first example he gives of them which receive seed, right? And then what happens? Immediately, what happens? It is stolen by the what? By now, by the what? Satan, right? It, it literally leaves them the moment they receive it. And God explains why. Because they do not understand it. Are you following what I'm saying? They don't have the understanding. The Bible says, anyone that heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which has sown in his heart. This is he who received the seed by the wayside. The one that received the seed by the wayside is the one who gets the word but does not understand it. There is a way in fleeing away from what you don't understand. It's not the deliberation to flee. No, 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 no. It's the indirect thing that sort of represents fleeing in the spirit even though physically it's not your intention because again there are many things we do or don't do because we don't know are you following what i'm saying and then there is a presence with another degree that comes because of a word sent through a man you understand the first one was a word sent to a man the second one was a word sent through a man there's a degree of presence as well. Are you following what I'm saying? The first one was the word sent to a man. The second was the word sent through a man. There's a certain presence that it comes with. In the book of Acts, if you remember, some of you have read the story of the book of Acts. You remember the time of the story of Cornelius? How there was a devout man who feared the Lord, an Italian fellow in his old household. They used to fast and pray and one time the angel appears to him and tells him, you know what? Send three men to Joppa, go look for Simon Peter. And then at the same time Simon gets a vision and da 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 da. Long and short we find Peter in the house of Cornelius. And he starts to speak the word. Hallelujah. Peter starts to speak the word. He starts to speak the word. As he's speaking forth and explaining how of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but any man that calleth on his name and walketh righteousness to him is granted. He speaks of the visitation because he has finally come to the realization that God did not come for the Jew only, but he came for the Gentile too. And that the spirit was not only to be granted to the Jew only, but it was also accessed by the Gentile too. That was a revelation to Peter. Peter had been legal all his life. Remember even in the first vision, the sheep comes from heaven with four legs and feet and animals and God tells him kill and eat. He goes to Leviticus, remembers the scripture and he tells him for I cannot eat anything that is what? Unclean. And God asks him, how can you call unclean what the Lord has cleansed? By the instruction of the word that I sent to you, I have cleansed the things I've sent by vision. I'm doing something bigger than that. I'm trying to use you, Peter, which he carries the keys of the kingdom to open the door to the Gentile church. Not to enter there, there in. The grace was not given to Peter to enter the Gentile. No, his grace was given to the Jew. But sometimes the doors we open are not for us to enter. We need the maturity and humility before God to tell the difference. Somebody shout hallelujah. It takes too much humility to know that God used me to open this door. But I'm not the man to enter. I'm not the man to enter. You're dealing in a generation of men of God who protect their doors. <laughs> who, they protect their what? There are doors. At least the apostle enters it and then he does better than me. Listen, that's a learning man. A learned man cannot be intimidated by the gift of another man. A learned man cannot be intimidated by the door open unto another man. Why? Because the responsibility of this door is tied to the divine assignment of God upon my life. 
it's not stabbed to the operation, the simple principle of, of how, no, no, it's stabbed to the divine assignment of God ordained on my life. And the satisfaction that I'm fulfilling what he called me to do. If he's called me for two, and I'm sure he has called me for two, and I preach to those two, it shall be well. I cannot last over another man's congregation and say, ah, because this guy has a big congregation. No, no. You understand? That's his calling. That's why God has called him. I was also ordained for some. You understand? And one day, when I'm, you know, as we grow bigger, again, we don't compare ourselves with our ministries. Oh, the first we have this one. Oh, first we have 8,000. Oh, then we're going for two. No, but the point here is, again, it's not about the number. The point is you, the individual. Why are you here? Why do you come to Fenero on Sunday? Did God instruct you to come? If he instructed you to come, are you planted in the house of the Lord? When you come, do you get answers? Do you feel God speaking to you? If he does, then settle. Are you hearing me? Do you hear the word call out the deepest dimension of conviction in you? Then you've reconciled it. Settle and allow the word of God to work through you. Are you hearing me? And don't compare yourself with anybody. Oh, this one is this, oh, this one is that. Now I should have done this. Because again, envy, lust, those things are carnal. You can lust and think you're hungry for God. It's very possible for a man to lust and think that he is hungry for God. But then you receive not. For if God sees that you want to consume it on your, on your own personal lust. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, Peter is Speaking in the house called Cornelius, God has given, it the, given him the biggest revelation in human history, in his time. That all the while they thought that this thing was for the Jews, the Gentiles prayed in windows, they were isolated like animals, they were called dogs and all these kinds of things. And then Peter sees that actually God was going to justify the Gentiles through faith. Peter is amazed. And in verse 44, Upstem. The Bible says, while he yet spake, somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them. Every man that had the word, the Spirit falls on them that had the word. How did that happen? The man of God was preaching. Let me tell you. If you are a minister of the gospel, you are a teacher, you are a preacher, you are an evangelist, you need this degree of the presence. You need it. And if you don't have it, receive it now. Because there are things that are not qualified by articulation. There are things that require vindication of spirit. That as a man speaketh, the power of God is present. That is the power that heals the sick. That is the power that cleanses the leper. That is the power that gets cancers out of men's bodies. That is the, that is the presence that gets viruses out of men's bodies. That's the presence that changes situations. That is the presence that convicts the hearts of men. Every man who preaches needs that degree. You cannot speak as an average man. No. You can't talk as an average person. That's political. That's religion. That's why people are dying. They're going back to bondage every day. Because when they're receiving the word, the word does not come with enough conviction and it does not carry enough life. But may God do something in your life. You, you don't even need to be on the pulpit. No. That same power has effect when you're working at your workplace. You make a suggestion in the meeting and it comes with a sudden anointing. That same power comes when you're doing a business consultative meeting. You command a sudden power and as you're speaking, your ideas come with a certain oil. Your ideas come with a sudden anointing. You don't just speak. Every word you speak is heavy. You don't convict people by how well you speak. No. You convict people by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the presence of God on your words. Hallelujah. That is why he says when you stand before them, you shall not need to say. You will not need to rehearse. You will not need to... No. He shall give you what himself. It will stir in the hearts of your hearers. The Bible says the most holy emotions. Colossians says. And that's persuading 
We cannot persuade men only by the plausible words of men. There are people that can never understand you because you speak well. Even Apollos was not a complete minister because he was a good orator. No, he needed the final way. He needed the right way. There was something missing in that man even though he was a good speaker. You see, there are people who speak so well. And they can convince to a certain degree. They can convince to a certain degree. But there are men who don't even have... They might not be as plausible, as convincing as you may want them to. But they have something. You need this anointing if you're a minister of the gospel. You need this anointing if you're a business person. You need this degree of anointing if you're a working person. You need this degree of anointing if you're a student. Your presentation will come out and people say, Wow. One time, I attended a graduation ceremony of one of us here. And this person is given a mic to speak on our graduation ceremony. This girl spoke. In the middle of her speech, we just found ourselves speaking in tongues. The atmosphere changed. Even non-believers, even non-believers, they were all like this. But there was a guy, a very rich fellow, he was seated on my very next table. The man looked at me and said, Grace, Rubega, what did you put in that girl? I said, it's God working in her. He said, my attention focus is just seconds. Usually when people speak, they speak about 20 seconds and my attention is gone. That guy says, I listened the whole way. There was something on those words. There was some, some of you parents, when the Bible speaks of chastising your children, it's not in the cane. No, it's in the heaviness of the words. When your child says, you look into your child's eyes and tell him, don't do that again. And they feel like the deepest conviction has come to their soul. And they will never do it again. Not because you slap them. Not because, you know people say, oh, spare the rod and spoil the child. But listen, what is the rod? The psalmist says, your rod and stuff, they comfort me. It's okay to slap, but it's okay to punish children, put them in your corner, in, in the, you know, the understandable way. But there is nothing as powerful as a woman or a man of God who knows God a certain way. I know a boy who was on drugs. The guy said, he told me he did drugs for about four or five years. They failed to fix him. His father was a man of God and he did not know that the boy was doing drugs under him. The guy tells me one time he walks into his father's office and the, that day he had done something awful after taking weed. And the, he says the father looked at him and told him, I have no words for you. He told me he never smoked weed another day. That's the power of a man of God who has the words that are anointed by God. You need this degree. I cannot tell you enough. You need this degree. You need it. It will convince men before you even speak much. You'll just say praise God and they will know that you know God. They will know that you know God. The Bible says while he yet speak. That means that's the vindication of the Holy Ghost. That's the mystery of godliness. You can't have a full understanding of the mystery of godliness when this thing is not operating on you. Why? Because the God that you serve always lives to vindicate and justify everyone you're speaking. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. Now, in these degrees also, I find that I must define very carefully. I'm going to take you a bit back here. I must define very carefully something that I've seen confusing in the Christian faith. Right? 
the difference between the indwelling spirit and the baptizing of the spirit in the gospel of john chapter 1 and verses 3 the bible says this is now john the baptist all right speaking about who jesus he says and i knew him not but he had sent me to baptize with water like he didn't know christ but god had sent him to baptize what with water and the same said unto me upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him the same is he which baptizes with the holy ghost now there is a presence we also have to define that degree there is a degree of the presence of god that comes upon your life because of the indwelling presence of the person of the holy spirit why did i mention the first two separate it's because the second one i mentioned is not subject of whether the man has the spirit or not are you hearing me when he was talking to the house of cornelius they were not born again but the power of god came upon them isn't it so that one is not subject to whether you're born again or not to whether the person they don't have to be born again for the power of god to operate through your words that's why I say it can even work in a secular environment. Are you following me? Now, the first one that I mentioned of Jonah, yes, he was a man in a relationship with God, but as we know in the Old Testament, they did not have the indwelling presence of the Spirit. You know that. These were souls responding and relating with God. That is why in the Old Testament dispensation, the word that is always mentioned is the spirit came upon. So these were men in the soulish realm relating with God. The only time we see the spirit of God dwelling in man, it's the beginning of the New Testament church in the book of Acts chapter 2. Do you agree? Now that's where I'm at now. So you understand where I'm coming from why I make this third and, and didn't make it first. You understand it? So there is a presence that comes with the indwelling presence of the person of the Holy Spirit, which every believer has. When you become born again, you don't receive half the Spirit. You don't receive quarter of the Spirit. Now when you people hear people saying, oh, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, you, I want to explain to you what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you became born again, you received the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, fully, completely. You didn't receive a quarter that on the baptism day that you were added to full. That's another thing. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the fullness of the person of the Holy Spirit. That presence dwells in every believer. But that is not the igniting power of the anointing without. Again, distinguish between the anointing within and the anointing without. Are you following me? There's a difference. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, the anointing within, his primary ministry is to minister to the crisis within. For example, he gives you a peace that passes all understanding. He guards your heart and mind in Christ. He gives you a joy unspeakable, full of glory. He gives you the inward meditations of your soul. That is the responsibility of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. That is why anybody who has the Spirit, he has a certain peace. Everybody who has a certain, the Holy Spirit, you have a certain degree of joy no man who is not born again has. That is why some of you, or many of you, or all of you, the day you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there was a peace that came to your soul. You felt like everything was okay, the world could stop. You didn't hear anything. You, you remember that time? That was the power, the operation, the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. He deals with the inward faculties of the individual. That is not enough to make a lame man walk and open a blind eye to cast out the cancer you need more you need more somebody said hallelujah yeah. now in acts 2 4 he says and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other 
tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They speak in tongues. Right? Now, let me explain the difference between the first one, when you receive Christ Jesus, and this one. Right? When you confess the Lord Jesus, right, you receive the Holy Spirit. That's one degree. Okay? But then, there is something called a baptism. What John says that I baptize with water, but he that cometh shall baptize with the Spirit. When he speaks of the baptism of the Spirit, it is what is happening in the book of Acts that I've just read for you too full. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and then they what? They speak in other tongues. But I'm going to explain that the word there fulfilled, it's, it's not as though God got this container that was half full and then filled it up. Are you hearing me? He's giving of the experience of the word baptize is baptizo, right? The Greek word is baptizo, meaning to be immersed, right? It's one thing for you to drink water and you're full. It's another for you to drink water and then you dive into water. That's what they call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You cannot be baptized when you're not full of the Spirit. Who is understanding what I'm saying? You can't be baptized if you're not full of the Spirit. It begins from within. The rivers of living water flowing out of you, Rika, Pata, Raba, they flood you. There is a place where, of course, when you're born again, you have the full Spirit. But again, like I said, you have to transition to the place of being baptized in the Spirit. And the Bible says the evidence is speaking in tongues. You know, there are people who don't speak, believe in speaking in tongues. There are people who don't speak in tongues. And I'll dare you, there is no man who doesn't speak in tongues and can flow in the miraculous than a man who speaks in tongues. It has never happened in church history. It will never happen. Of course, there is even doctrines that say, oh, you know, uh, it's, uh, some people receive it, some don't. It's a gift, so if you don't have it... Eh. No, let me tell you. Okay. Oh, how is the Spirit received? Galatians tells you, the Spirit is received by faith. The only challenge with... with um, with the excesses I see in the Christian faith, is many people like me, I didn't receive tongues by, I didn't scream. A man just said, open your mouth, and I just opened and out of it, why? Because I obtained them by faith. The Spirit gave me utterance. He did need to set me beside myself, but if He does set you beside yourself, it's still okay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They even times it's knocked me out and I found myself speaking in tongues. The first time I knew that the tongues I, I speak were of God, I woke up one day speaking in tongues. You know having a whole night sleep? And then as you wake up, you go, Raka, papa, rabba, I go, Woo! Sheke, bra, baba. I'm like, what is happening to me? So even to say what is happening to me, I found myself saying, Rika, pa, no, ro, ro, ro. I knew, eh, kwena, eh, chise, and I remember during that time there was a little Catholic girl, had the core, she was a stoned heart, no metallic, this can be stoned, strongest metal, like those hammer, it was in her heart. And I remember, so in a meeting, preaching, and then the power of God hits her so badly she passes out like a dead being. So they bring her in a certain corner. So the Spirit of the Lord tells me, you know what? Go lay hands on this woman and speak in tongues. And I lay in the hands on hands, spoke in tongues for about 15 minutes. She wakes up. She didn't even remember anything that took place. I just remember her waking up after a lot, like an hour and a half. And she's looking for her shoes. Now, the anointing that removes shoes is interesting. You just see that the shoe is out. You don't even know how it came out. <laughs> so... She collects her shoes, goes to the hostel. She calls me in the evening and says, you know what, I want you to lead me to Christ. I said, how? Oh, why? She says, you know what, when I fell under the power, I don't remember, but I left the earth. And then in a trance, in the spirit, I could see you, you preached the whole gospel of Jesus Christ to me. You convinced me, you touched, I asked you questions, you answered every question. When we were done, and I said, I'm ready now to receive Jesus, I woke up. That means the, the communion there in the spirit took probably a whole hour. My spirit communicated, and as my spirit was communicating, it translated to her understanding the gospel of my Lord and Savior, Jesus. How can I doubt tongues after that experience? It's not possible. 
It's not possible. So when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you receive the Spirit. Then from there, you transition to the baptism. And in some uh, scriptures, they call it field. But the experience there, field, is not your understanding of field. No. It's the understanding of the baptism of the Spirit. Have we understood that? The immersion of your whole self for the outward operation of the power of the Holy Spirit on your life. Have you understood it? So the one you receive on Salvation Day is for the things within. And the baptism experience now helps you operate in the things without. In fact, that is what takes you into the second dimension of the Spirit. The second dimension of the spirit. You start to heal the sick. You start to cleanse the lepers. You start casting out devils. You realize that until the Christ was immersed, there was never a miracle recorded. You remember that? The moment he's put in that water, he comes up, led into the wilderness. From the wilderness, the miraculous has begun. Isn't it? Because that is the thing that helps you operate from without. It helps you operate on the power that is without. Are you following what I'm saying? But there are two Greek words I need to interest you with. In Ephesians chapter 5 and 18, the Bible says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always to all things and to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you know, you know, Many people, when they're speaking that, they leave out the most, one of the most important things in verses 21, submitting yourselves to one another. We, we speak in tongues, hymns, and spiritual songs. We make melody in our hearts, but we don't carry the spirit of humility to submit ourselves to one another. That is why we're not full. Outward. You know, many, they end there. Speaking in tongues, making melody in your heart, they give thanks stories to God, they end there. But they forget that there's a place that requires you for submission. Huh? But that's not what I came to touch today. When you study the word there for be filled, the word there is pleru. In the book of Acts 2, 4, when it says they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the word there for filled is pleito. There's a difference between pleito, the Greek word, and pleru, the Ephesians 5.18. I'll explain that. Acts 2 for Plato is that baptism that I explained, right? Ephesians 5, 18, 19, 21 is not a baptism experience. In fact, the first one is, is more of be supplied with a baptism. The second one is libro supply. This is the thing that causes the overflow. Ephesians 5, 18 and 21. When you wake up in the morning and say, My God is good. Then you quote the scriptures as you're singing psalms and, and hymns, making melody. When you start to say those things, Rika banda kosha raba baba seke brakarara. You don't need to have a good voice. He said making melody in your heart. <laughs> you might be singing well in your heart, but outside you sound like. <laughs> That's why I tell people, this one is a liberal supply. Ephesians 5, Plero, the Greek word there is the liberal supply. It, 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 it gives you into the overflow. You have more than you need. You know that now you're beyond the field. You know when the Bible says he gives us all things liberally? That's the liberal grace. The liberal supply of the Spirit is Ephesians 5, 18 to 21. When you wake up, of course, we are baptized. The outward thing is working. But how do we go into the overflow of this thing? How do we go beyond just the basic operation? If you want to go deeper in the operation without, you learn to sing some hymns and spiritual songs. You make melody in your heart. Always giving thanks. Oh, 
walk. You know what it means to be already. You're walking. So, oh God, thank you, thank you, thank you for the wisdom upon my life. Shaka brakataraba. The Bible says you've been made my wisdom, my redemption, my sanctity. In you dwells all treasures of wisdom and knowledge, and you've been made unto me wisdom. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the wisdom. As you continue to do that, the anointing of wisdom is multiplied on your life. That brings the multiplication effect. That yes, men are wise, but on you it is. Men carry knowledge, but on you it is. Men carry a healing grace, but on you it is. Up there. Men carry understanding, but on you it is what? Men are healthy, but on you it is what? Super healthy. You see, you find yourself speaking, speaking speaking not as one believing for the baptismal no the baptism has taken place you carry the mandate and function to operate without but this is deeper than that you want to go higher or you want to go deeper you want to launch deeper in the liberality of the spirit that increases that's why you, you look at people who are always on the lines for prayer requests who are always asking for counseling please cast this devil out they don't practice Ephesians 5 18 and 21 they come to men who are full for help they come to men who are liberal and he says and the liberal soul shall be made fat and what is fatness fatness is the anointing fatness is the anointing the yoke shall be broken because of the fatness of the anointing. The libro so Ricando Shebra Kataraba. You wake up in the morning, a ketere. That's why you must have the word of God within you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed. Oh, thank you for the anointing that is upon me. Thank you because the blind see. Thank you because the lame walk. Thank you because the deaf hear. Thank you because that my presence you must disappear thank you because i just look at someone and the power of god goes through them and as you do that it starts to happen thanksgiving thanksgiving psalms and hymns nail it in your heart you don't stop singing the wondrous things i remember many years and i still do it you know many years ago i just learned to go and just get psalms and sing through them and compose my own songs no man will ever hear somebody shout hallelujah i would go on to victory psalms <laughs> i don't go in the funny ones where oh god my enemies have killed me they after my tail and they want to consume me you know some people love the funny lines eh? they love those things where job is crying to god why has thou forsaken me you understand those are the things they love no no i go in the places of victory thou preparest the table in the presence of my enemies baba i abide in the shadow ten thousand fall at one side a thousand on the other but none of those things shall in any means come nigh me re re ke te 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 and I'm basing kosa ra ba 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 se ke re only shall I see the reward of the wicked ra 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 ba 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 se far from the places of an unreachable untouchable re ke te 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 re ba ba you will send your angels charge over me and I repeat it you will send your angels charge over me and I say you will send your angels charge over me Rabababa say to keep me from dashing my foot on a stone Rebazakabrabrakerere for I have made you my shepherd I shall not want any good thing Rikabakosererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererererer
of the anointing. The libro so ricando sebra cataraba. You wake up in the morning a ketere. That's why you must have the word of God within you. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed. Oh, thank you for the anointing that is upon me. Thank you because the blind see. Thank you because the lame walk. Thank you because the deaf hear. Thank you because that my presence too must disappear. Thank you because I just look at someone and the power of God goes through them. And as you do that, it starts to happen. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Psalms and hymns. Melody in your heart. You don't stop singing the wondrous things. I remember many years and I still do it. You know? Many years ago, I just learned to go and just get psalms and sing through them. And compose my own songs no man will ever hear. Somebody shout hallelujah. I would go on to victory psalms. <laughs> I don't go in the funny ones where, oh God, my enemies have killed me. They are after my tail and they want to consume me. You know, some people love the funny lines. Eh? They love those things where Job is crying to God, Why hast thou forsaken me? You understand? Those are the things they love. No, no. I go in the places of victory. Thou preparest the table in the presence of my enemies. I abide in the shadow. 10,000 fall at one side, a thousand on the other, but none of those things shall in any means come nigh me re re ke te 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 and I'm bathing kosa ra ba 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 se ke re only shall I see the reward of the wicked ra ro ra ba 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 se far from the places of an unreachable untouchable re ke te 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 re ba ba you will send your angels charge over me and I repeat it you will send your angels charge over me and strength comes as you wait on the Lord. Before you know that, you're dancing alone. You're dancing alone. As though that's not enough. You enter your car and the first song you switch on, Pua! I could sing of your... And then you're, you're walking and you're happy. And then what's up with you? They don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. Hallelujah. They don't get it. It's not because situations have yet changed. There are. But I am... I'm where I'm supposed to be. Do you know what I call that? Huh? I call that the zone. I call that the zone. When I'm there, I say I'm in the zone. When I say that, I mean I'm in the zone. When I know that I'm in the perfect twist, there at that particular point, I'm just waiting for a blind eye to cross me. I'm just waiting for a deaf ear. I'm waiting for something to provoke what's inside there for a miracle. That's why he said, be not drunk with wine where in is excess. He didn't say, don't drink wine to the excess. He says, be not drunk. He's talking of a drunken stupor. He's not talking about the process drinking. That's why I'm not talking about being baptized. No. You are already baptized. Hallelujah. But Ephesians 5, 18, experience 1921 is the in excess thereof. It's the in excess thereof. Are you following what I'm saying? Learn to sing songs for yourself. Learn to sing hymns for yourself. He says, when my heart is in the dumps. You remember David? When my heart is in the dumps. He got to a situation where things were funny. He was there. He says, why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying in the blues? He says, fix my eyes on God. Soon I'll be praising again. He puts a smile on my face. You know why he's praising again? Because when you're in the dumps, what does the next verse say? When my soul, he says, is in the dumps. He says, I rehearse everything I know of you. Everything I know of you. 
imagine you're in the hardest story. And then someone is bypassing you and you're singing. You are good and you're mighty forever. Things are happening. You are good and you're mighty forever. Then you start praising your God. You start praising your God. You start praising your God. He says, I rehearse everything I know from Jordan depths to Haman Heights, including Mount Misa. All of those were his victories. He goes back to everything. It's like sometimes when I'm praying for broken bones, I say, But God, you did it last week. You did it the other week. You did it two days ago. I saw it the first time in Kawaii. What about this bone? My heart is indicting a good man. And before you know it, you're thrown into the excess. And it's okay to be excess. Now, let me share the last degree in the highest measure. Somebody will ask, what is the highest measure? What is the highest degree of God's presence on your life? What is the highest degree of God's presence on your life? All right? Now, in Galatians 5, 6. The Lord told me this about eight or nine years ago. He told me that the richest measure of my presence is through the revelation of the faith that worketh in love. Did you hear that? The faith that worketh in love. The faith that worketh in love. Galatians 5, 6. He says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth no uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love has what availeth. That's the highest measure. Now, if you go to Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 17, the Amplified Bible, he says, May Christ, again he's repeating what Galatians 5, 6 says, through your faith, right actually dwell down abide make his permanent home in your hearts may he be may you be rooted in love you see and founded securely on love you see may christ dwell in your hearts through faith and when he dwells in your heart through faith he says may you be rooted in love may you abide deep in love you see faith and love he says the faith that worketh by love did you hear what i just said the faith that worketh by love. It's the same experience here in Ephesians where he says, May Christ through your faith actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. And when he does, the Bible says, May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. Deeply rooted in love, those are things you do as extending love to men. Deeply uh, founded securely on love, those are the things that confirm the affirmation of God's love in your heart. You understand? We walk in love, we help the sick, we give the poor, we forgive those that are unforgivable, we do all that. That is in love. But when we say securely on love, it is the convictions that come to you, that protect you, that keep you in God. For example, when you go to a doctor and they diagnose you, when you're securely founded, when you're securely on love you always tell yourself he loves me so much to allow it to kill me hey! did you see that as a man securely on love because there's a security that comes with love and what does security do security is a keeper it's a keeper they chase you on a job and you know he loves me so much to luck that's a man who is secure on love. That means everything you're doing has one foundation. The foundation is you're standing on the love of God. And his love never fails. First Corinthians 13 verses 8. Love never fails. Agape never fails. Now he's back again in the faith that works in life. May Christ through your faith actually dwell down, settle, abide, make his permanent home in your heart. May you be rooted deep in love and founded secure in love. That, 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 that. Listen, that, that, that you may have the power and be strong 
to apprehend, listen, and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of that love, which is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth of it, that you may really come to know practically through the experience for yourself the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, and that you may be filled through all your being and to all the fullness of God, that you may have, listen, the richest measure of the divine presence. And he says, and you become a body holy, filled, and flooded with God himself, the faith that walketh by love. That's the highest measure of the divine presence on your soul, on your body, on your life. When you understand the faith which worketh by love. The faith that worketh by love is the highest, richest measure of the divine presence of God upon your life. Praise God. I want you to talk to God. Just talk to Him. Just talk to God. If you have tongues, speak in them. If you don't have them, receive them. Take my life and let me consecrate it, Lord, to you. Take my voice. Open your mouth and speak to God. Come on. I want to hear your voices. Raise your voice and speak. Come on, speak to God. 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 Every 
and you're here receive the power of the Holy Ghost may signs, miracles and wonders walk through you God is anointing your words take it in the name of Jesus take it in the name of Jesus Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, you're not going the same way you came. I feel that people God is anointing so heavily. Hey! Disease is far from you. You will not fail. Thank you, Jesus. If you have never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, wherever you are, if you're here and you've never spoken in tongues, just receive right now. Receive them now. Now. Open your mouth. The Spirit feels you. The Spirit feels you. If you have never given your life to Jesus, and you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. How can you walk without the presence? How can you walk without the Holy Spirit? How? How? Now, I want you to repeat these words after me. Okay? Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I believe that you died for my sins, that you are the Son of God who died for me and was raised for my glory. Say so tonight, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Tonight, I'm born again. My life is changed. 
Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.